Good morning. I'm Sherry Olson, and I'm an instructor at the Scroll Arts Center in Dunwoody, Georgia. Um, normally, I teach a teen wheel class, but today I'm going to be teaching a hand building. Um, so everybody grab a cup of coffee. I've got my Diet Coke, and I'm ready to go. And for this project, which is one of these butter dishes, my strong suggestion is that you use a no-grog clay because we're going to be wiping and smoothing. And if you do that um, too much on a grog clay, all your grog is going to show and it's not going to be as smooth as you would like. So this is the 609. It's a cone 6 clay. Um, clay. Um, and it's, uh, it's, in my mind, it's really lovely to work with. So I have uh, rolled out a slab, a quarter of an inch, and I am going to just compress and smooth the clay. I like to use an old credit card or an old hotel room card. Um, this is my favorite tool. And it's easy for me to manipulate to smooth, and I can cut ridges in it if I want and make some texture. This is a tidbit that I got from, I don't remember who, but they pick their clay up like this. And as long as it's not sloppy soft, the clay doesn't bend and get out of whack. It doesn't um, get any wrinkles in it or anything. I like to do that. So I've turned it over and I'm going to smooth this side, get all the little kinks out. Okay, while that's setting up and getting a little uh, firmer, I want to tell you what kind of tools and what kind of things you're going to need for this project. This is a piece of insulation um, that they put in the walls of homes. So you'll need something like this. It's lightweight. It can be easily cut through. If you don't have this, I'm sure one of the big box um, hardware stores would sell you a little scrap or you could use a piece of wood. It needs to be a little bit thick though. It can't be pliable. So this is about an inch thick and we're going to cut that or at least my husband's going to cut that. Did cut that and he used a jigsaw and this is three and a half by seven and a half and he just cut the edges. They're fairly smooth um, and they work really well. And then to get this corner kind of rounded, all we did was take some um, sandpaper and kind of cut down, kind of scrape it along and smooth out the corners. It worked really well. This was his first attempt. And you can see on this one, there's a little chink out of this. Um, so this is okay to use because this side is smooth and when I press it into the clay I won't have any little extra little kinks in it. So you definitely need this. Um, this is a three inch styrofoam ball that I have two of and I have cut probably um, a quarter of an inch from the bottom. The tip to this is that they need to be um, the same height. So if you're going to cut them, I would put them down on something, put a level and mark them, the two of them side by side. You're going to be using, initially, you're going to be using the styrofoam balls with the insulation. So, okay, 
I think we've got it. All right, so we're going to cut the clay to fit um, for the lid. It's important that your styrofoam balls don't move around, and you'll see what I mean in a second. So I've been taping mine down to the template here, and I'm just using masking tape just so they won't shift when I drape this form with the clay. So we've got the template, we've got the styrofoam balls. Now I'm going to put just a small piece of plastic. Um, dry cleaner plastic is wonderful, it works just fine. And I'm draping it over my template here. It doesn't need to be a big piece, as a matter of fact, a big piece kind of gets in the way, and so my suggestion is don't make a big piece. Um, the template, if you'll remember, is three and a half by seven and a half, and to cover that, I need a piece of clay that's about eight by ten. And I'm going to try to get this square. It won't make much difference if I don't, but it's just kind of nice to start off straight. You can see I'm working on a um, banding wheel. It's easier to be able to turn and check all of your sides if something's on the banding wheel. So I am going to pick this up and I'm going to drape it across. Okay, it helps to have the clay just a little bit stiff. This clay is very, very soft. Um, so we kind of let it dry out just a little bit, and I think it's going to work fine. So, I'm making a little tent here. You can see where I've got the plastic, and I don't want that plastic to get in my way. So I'm kind of stuffing it underneath there. Okay, so I've draped, over, draped the clay over. Now I'm going to close off this end. And I love using the scalpel um, because I think it gives me a clean cut um, as opposed to using the uh, needle tool. You can see from the needle tool there's like little ragged edges. I, I feel like this really uh, gives me a, a nice cut. Okay, I always think of this as similar to wrapping a present because I'm going to cut the ball, the end of the ball was right about there, and all I did was slit from the end, and I am going to pull this around. Now, I don't really care whether this bottom part works or not, because we'll eventually be cutting off this. What I'm worried about and want to get right is this part here. And I've got way too much clay here, so I'm going to cut down it. And I'm going to fold it in. And then I'm going to fold the other side around. Now, I know all of you would sit there and say, but my teacher says I need to bevel this. And they're probably right, but I can't really see personally very well to bevel it, so, and I'm not too worried. I'm gonna be manipulating this enough that beveling is not gonna be an issue. So I'm just smoothing this together. My clay is soft enough and wet enough that I'm not even scratching and scoring. I'm going against all the rules that everybody's been taught. 
All right. Okay, I'm going to try to make this as nice as I can, but we have several opportunities to really smooth this out. And you can see up here, I've got a little, little pointed area. I'm just going to cut that off and work it in. Okay, it isn't perfect right now, but that's okay. We're going to come back to it. Uh, right now, for test fitting and everything, I want to start on the other end and do the exact same thing. Okay, I've got this. For this project, I also use the red, the softest rib that I can, that I, that Cheryl makes, because again, all this needs to be smooth, as smooth, uh, without any lines, as much as possible. And the red rib does the best job. This end came together fairly well, and I don't have any big bulges out here, pretty much. But if it did, all I would do would be kind of tap them and just see if I could get the big bulge to go away. Okay, so in the process of smoothing this out, I feel like I'm, I've got as much as I can do with my fingers. So I'm going to use a damp sponge. I don't want to put a lot of water on this because my purpose in doing this is to make the form, and then let it really set up and dry. So I'm just going to take a damp sponge and see if I can smooth everything out again a little bit. And again, this is the reason you don't want to use a clay that is broad. And just kind of go over the whole um, form here and make sure that I don't have any cracks or any wrinkles, that I don't have anything splitting, that everything is going okay. Okay, we've made the lid. Yay! Okay, so we've got the form made. I'm going to cut just a tad off of the skirt of this um, so that I can get the clay to lay as close to the form as possible while it dries out and firms up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to put this aside for just um, a couple of minutes. Let it firm up and we'll make the bottom and I'm going to use my expensive pottery tool here and smooth all the texture out this clay was laying out in between while we were working on the, the lid and so it's a little firmer it's starting out a little firmer than the lid was. Okay, flip over. Do the other side. Okay. So we're going to use our handy dandy little um, form again. This is why I had my husband make two because if you'll remember I've got one over there for the lid and now I'm going to need a second template to do the base. So 
I'm going to just cut off a hunk here and cut off a hunk here and I'm going to cut, I'm not measuring this obviously, cut the ragged edges there and over here. Okay, now I'm going to use this as a press mold. So I'm going to take that off. This is a piece of foam. It, it's, a, um, it's a very dirty piece of foam, actually. Um, but it's, um, it's thick. It's memory foam, I think. Um, but anything that you have that's going to be a little thick, or if you don't have anything thick, if you can find a couple thin ones, and layer them on top, you're going to need a pretty good layer of foam for this. So, I'm going to put the clay on there like that. I'm going to make sure that this is the template that really has the smooth edges. Um, and it does. This is the better of the two for using a bottom. However, here, I don't know if you can see or not, it does have a couple ragged edges. So I'm going to use this on the top. This is smoother down here and I'm going to use that on the bottom. So I'm going to place it about in the middle of the clay and I'm going to push. And I'm going to push all the way around on each side. A couple of times I'm going to go around this. really give it a good hard push. Okay, so I've pushed it in as much as I can and now I'm going to just take it out and see it makes a lovely, it's going to be a great tray. All this around here I'm not worried about because we'll fix that as this um, stiffens up and we'll work it a little bit and make this we're back with the lid again. It has stiffened up. I hit it with the heat gun real quick so that it would, um, so I could show you the inside and we could work on this some more. Otherwise, I would probably, depending on the temperature and the humidity, I would probably leave it uncovered for maybe three or four hours before I tried to un to uh, do this next step. Here's the bottom template. I'm going to take it out. There's the styrofoam balls. And you can see this one, the plastic didn't quite cover the whole ball. And so I've got little, um, you know, just kind of grumpy area right there. That's okay, but if I, if I was really lazy, you know, I'd probably m do a better job of covering it with the plastic. You can also see how messy the inside is with where I uh, took the, the little cuts and pushed it together. And that's not going to work because you don't want to see that kind of stuff on the finished project. So, we're going to work this and it's still soft enough on the inside that I can do a fairly good job I think with just my fingers kind of smoothing it in. Um, you can use any kind of hand building tool that you want. This just has kind of a rounded um, kind of a thumb like kind of end to it that I find helpful. So I'm just going to finish working on this. I'm going to take my damp sponge and see if I can finish smoothing this out. And remember, it's only damp. I don't want to add more water to this at this point. We're trying to get it to dry up and firm up a little bit. But it's, um, it's coming along. Again, I love this soft clay. The next thing I want to show you is how 
this has to be all trimmed off. This is a mess down here. So in order to make it the right height, you can see this rim right here. We're going to trim all that. That's where the um, edge of the template hit the clay. It made that nice little mark all the way around. So we're going to just follow that along and trim all that off. And hopefully not cut my thumb in the meantime. And you can see I'm working upside down now and I've got it resting on a piece of foam because I worked too hard to get this shape. I don't want it to get messed up on the table. So we've got it on this piece of foam. And while I'm working this inside, I'm using counter pressure on the outside so I'm not blowing this shape all out. Okay, um, for time's sake, I am going to, I worked on this yesterday, and so that I had one that was a little firmer and easier to um, work on, so you could kind of see what was going on. Um, this one, I did an image transfer method. I did this, um, I learned this technique, um, I think last summer, um, Davin's had a workshop. Uh, where I learned this. It's lots of fun. Um, so I put this on when the clay was damp and then made this form. So just want to explain that. This is really firm now. I haven't cut along the edge, but I have cleaned up the corners. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Okay, so it's holding its shape fairly well. I also made a bottom for it, a tray. Um, I wish I would have left more clay around it. It's, I'm not real excited about this because it's not going to have much of a lip, but say lovey. Okay, this is another handy dandy tool for this project. This is a sure form. Um, I think if you were a woodworker, it might be called a rasp. Um, but in the clay world, I refer to it as a sure form. What I'm going to do, even though this is a little bit too small and I'm not real excited about it, I'm going to go ahead and trim it. And we'll see if it looks halfway decent then. So I'm just going to go around. I'm going to get these little spiky corners done um, you could use a knife or something else but I feel like I've got more control by using the sure form because I can I don't have to make a sharp cut I can just kind of nip at it a little bit at a time and this little edge, I don't know what we're going to do with that. We'll just have to make it look pretty. So when you cut your bottom, if you leave a little more clay on it, like I've done here, it makes a nice little area that you can pick up um, the butter dish with. Um, again, I'm kind of messed up and I didn't get a lot of clay on here, kind of bare minimum. So I'm just going to continue kind of going around here and cleaning it up. I'm going to take a damp sponge and I'm going to soften those edges. Okay, so I um, got most of the clay off these 
spiky corners are all done now. So I'm going to take my um, damp sponge and work the inside. Oh, I just put my fingernail in there. Okay. Flip it over. You see, I'm still working on this um, foam to give it some support. I'm just going to clean up the bottom of it. This is when I would write my name or stamp my stamp. Um, if I were going to do that. Okay, so I'm going to let this sit. There's still a little got a couple dog hairs. I've got a black lab at home that always adds to my pottery. So um, I'm going to let that stiffen up. It still could use just a little bit more cleaning. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to finish this. So remember that I've cut away this segment and I've adjusted it so that it will fit in the tray. If I've got um, too much clay out on the end, because remember I've, I've uh, folded it over, then I would use the rasp out here too. And just trim this up a little bit. You don't want your walls to be very thick. You want them to be uniform. Because you're going to be seeing the outside and the inside of this form, you want this all to be as even as possible. So I'm just going to go around the edges on this. Try to make everything as even as possible. I love this tool. And where I use the rasp out here, again, a damp sponge smooths this all out. Again, it's the clay without any grog in it. Really helps. And you can probably spend hours trying to get this all perfect, which I'm not going to do right this second. But if I were home and working on it, I'd be doing a little bit more just to kind of clean it up. I'm going to let it dry inside the bottom. Make sure, again, making sure that it fits properly. Okay, not too bad. All right. Okay, this is the lid that we made earlier that I'm letting dry. And I'm going to show you how I made these flowers and the leaves on here. If you want to do that, you, um, again, the one that I started yesterday is a different, is an image transfer. I'm not going to put these little flowers and leaves on this. Um, but if you're curious, I'm just going to go ahead and show you real quick how I do these. I'm going to make one of the roses. Now, these are really basic. I'm going to use my pony roller and just roll it out as thin as I can without making a total mess of it. Okay, and I'm going to add just a little bit of moisture because this clay has gotten fairly dry. And I'm afraid as I roll it, it's going to crack. It also doesn't need to be quite this wide. So I'm going to cut that off. Okay, I'm going to start at one end. And I'm going to start rolling. And as I roll, I'm going to kind of pinch and make some ruffles as I go around. 
around and around and I can go around and just make as many ruffles as I want and I'm squeezing on the bottom so okay that looks like about enough I'm just kind of making the stem as I'm pushing it all together down here and this is just a suggestion of a flower it doesn't need to look perfect it just is something to put on there I'm going to cut as much of this stem off as I possibly can now this I will scratch and score because it's gotten dry So I always have some slip, and I have a toothbrush that I keep in that, and so I don't have to worry about trying to get slip and stuff for it. So I'm just going to slip that, and I'm going to put it on right there. And to make a leaf. Pretty simple. So leaf shape, I'm going to pinch the edges to smooth those out. And I try to give my leaves a little bit of movement on this it's a little tricky I want these to be able to be used and I don't want them to get broken when people handle them so I'm not giving them a whole lot of movement I'm going to draw the vein right down through the middle and then I'm going to take something that has a little knife like um, shape to it and I'm gonna just kind of punch it in like that and there's my leaf so I'm gonna make a big one bigger than this this isn't big enough for up here that's gonna span from where this styrofoam ball was to this because there's a little bit of a dip in here a suggestion of a dip and so I want my handle to go across there I'm also going to give it lots I'm going to put a coil underneath there because I want to give it some extra stability um, when people pull on it to lift it up I want to make sure that they can um, that it's not going to come off and it's not going to crack so I will score and slip the coil underneath and kind of work that in so it isn't quite so obvious, but yet people can get their fingers in and pull it up. The other flower that I've done on here is a tulip. It's cutting a U. with a little V in the middle and again smoothing the edges then I'm going to cut a V like that and I'm going to stick it behind there from upside down I can't even see if this looks right <laughs> yeah it's okay so this gives a little puffiness I obviously didn't do a perfect job on that but you get the idea the other thing I've done is I've taken a pencil I like to work with a pencil and I've drawn stems 
and then put um, stroke and coat. This is all done with stroke and coats, which I really like for something like this. If you're not familiar with stroke and coat, it is a, technically it's a low fire glaze that can go up to um, cone six, maybe in some cases a little bit higher. It doesn't have any depth, it doesn't break, but it gives spectacular color. And I really like using it for this. Okay, this isn't quite finished, um, but I've trimmed the tray, and I think I'm going to keep it long on the side because I kind of like being able to pick it up here. Um, I've put some flowers around. I've got a leaf for the handle. Um, it still needs to dry quite a bit, and I'll do a little bit more shaping on the, the um, lid. And then it will go in for bisque firing. Hope you've enjoyed it. Give it a try. Um, it looks kind of daunting. I think at least it did for me when I first started doing these. But it really isn't. It's, it's lots of fun. Decorate it any way you want.